Cool. Uh, so in this video, I'm showing something very similar to what um, I ended with last time, but it's cleaned up a little bit. Um, so I'm still creating these two NumPy arrays uh, that are pretty lar large. Um, the first one is 3,000 rows by 2,000 columns. The second one is um, 2,000 columns by 4,000, uh, I'm sorry, 4,000, well, <laughs> 2,000 rows by 4,000 columns. Um, I'm converting both of these to uh, PyTorch tensors. Um, if it's available and uh, it's not right now, I'm moving them over to my CUDA G enabled GPU. And then finally, I'm multiplying them together and measuring how long that takes. And it's about one and a half seconds. So in this video, I'm actually going to run this on a GPU. And uh, there's multiple ways you could do that. Um, first, let me talk about the expensive way that I don't really recommend, but you should be aware exists. If I head over to um, my Google Cloud platform, right, and I think um, you know, you've seen this before. If I go under Compute Engine, uh, Virtual Machine Instances, um, we did this in like the first uh, week this of the semester. Um, I can create a new VM instance, and I have the option when I'm doing this to um, add a GPU, right? So I think the instances we've been using this uh, this semester are are kind of these. Um, uh, oh, let me see here. We've been we've been using these uh, G1 small instances. And for about 14 bucks a month. And so we were doing that. And um, there's an option here, right? Under, if I make this a little bit larger, maybe I can see CPU platform and GPU. I, I could um, have some options over what G, uh, CPU I'm using. I'm not trying to care about that now. But I'm going to actually try to add a, a GPU. And I see that there's a problem here. Instances with shared core machine types uh, cannot use the GPU, right? And so I see, okay, I have these two shared core ones. The cheapest two options don't come with GPUs. So I'm going to go up to this one. This is the cheapest option that does have GPUs. And now I'm able to get this GPU here. Now, it turns out that this is quite expensive. If I scroll back to the top, I see I'm maybe paying $250 a month for this. And um, if I check the other options, like let me look at some of these other ones. Uh, this one, I'm paying $300 a month. Uh, Take a look at this one. I think this is one of the more expensive ones. Oh, that's the cheapest one, 203. And uh, what about this one down here? A pretty fancy one. I'd be paying over a thousand dollars a month to do this. So, um, and, and if I try to do this right now, it actually won't even let me because I have to send special permission to enable this feature um, to Google, right? Because most people doing this, they don't want them to actually end up with these um, huge bills. So, um, if you're doing this, right, you could, um, you know, you'll be paying by the do uh, a dollarly rate per the hour. And so if you have something you need to get done and uh, uh, you could pay like five bucks and run it for a couple hours and then really make sure you shut it down and don't leave it running the whole month, All right? So that's a reasonable thing to do um, in, in practice, right? As long as it's not running uh, all the time, right? It's gonna be still a lot more expensive than what we've been doing. Uh, the other option, which is kind of a, somewhat of an experimental platform um, but is actually going to let us use GPUs for free is this other Google service called uh, Collaboratory. And, um, and Collaboratory is actually uh, kind of Google's flavor of Jupyter Notebooks. So if I head here, um, I can create a new no uh, Jupyter Notebook like so. Um, I'm going to do that. And, um, and I'm going to call this uh, you know, part two because that's what I'm doing right now. And, uh, and this works pretty similar to Jupyter Notebooks that you're familiar with, right? There's some weird quirks to it, right? Everything looks a little bit different. Uh, the keyboard shortcuts don't quite work, uh, but, but it's basically Jupyter Notebooks and it's free, right? So that's not bad. Um, you can also see that uh, it's um, uh, kind of storing all my files in, in Google Drive, right? So I could go to locate in Drive and I would find my um, Jupyter Notebooks, my IPy and B files. Okay, so generally I don't really like working inside of Collaboratory, but the big advantage that we have is that they will give us free access to a GPU. And um, uh, this is somewhat experimental, right? So, uh, you know, each time you try it, they might give you a different GPU. Um, if their system is under, under load, maybe they stop uh, giving you a GPU in the middle of what you're doing, uh, but it's free, right? So it's kind of a nice, a place to experiment, uh, experiment with this um, instead of paying hundreds of dollars a month. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy um, copy my code over right these four cells, and um, 
One other thing that's kind of nice about uh, Collaboratory is that they've already installed all this stuff that, that you're likely to use, like PyTorch, right? So we don't have to deal with that. Uh, let me generate this stuff. Okay, so I have my matrices. Um, and um, uh, let, let, me, let me run this. So let me just add some prints here. I'm going to say, uh, the other thing you can kind of see that's kind of weird is that they do a different default in terms of tabbing. Uh, but let me do this and say uh, CUDA available. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to print not available so I can, I can kind of tell whether it's being used. Not available. And uh, I'm going to run that. And it's saying CUDA not available. We're going to come back and, and fix that momentarily. Uh, but let me just grab this last piece here as well. And so I'm going to run this. And um, and I see it takes pretty similar, even even though like right now I'm running on a different virtual machine for collaboratory than than the one where I kind of spun up before, right? This virtual machine I own, laboratory, they're just kind of giving me uh, this virtual machine uh, while this is running. I can see actually up here um, how much it's using. Okay, so how can I make CUDA available? Um, well, I have to change the runtime, right? So I'm going to go up to runtime and, um, and then change the runtime uh, type. And, uh, and I want Python 3, of course, uh, but I have this option here of a hardware accelerator. And if I go to these options, it'll talk about that. Uh, they have these four different kinds of GPUs that um, are available and, uh, and uh, you know, there's no guarantee about what you get. If you pay them 10 bucks a month, they'll try to give you faster ones, but still there's really no um, strong guarantees. But anyway, I'm gonna do GPU and kind of take what I can get. Uh, you know, free is good, right? And you can see my notebook had to restart here. So let me delete this. Let me just try to run it from the beginning. And uh, I have to do those imports again. And, and I'm going to create my matrices. And um, now I'm going to run this. And now it's going to actually say CUDA available, which is good. I'm on there now. And, and you can see last time I ran this, it took uh, one and a half seconds because I was running on the CPU. I run this now, and you see it takes this tiny fraction uh, of a second, right? It's like, um, what is that? I guess it's, it's more, it's about 75 times faster, right? So these GPUs are giving me this huge speed up. Um, I can still look at uh, the C matrix if I, if I want to. Um, and so that's all good. If I wanted to, I could move C back to uh, the CPU. Right, that would be a fine thing to do. Well, let me just like right now, if I look at C.device, right, it's on, on CUDA, right? If I wanted to, I could say C equals C.2 CPU, and then look at C.device, and I'll, I'll see it's moved back. Um, why, why do I want to do that? Well. Uh, one reason you might want to move things around is that if I'm doing operations on two matrices, they have to be in the same place, right? So let's say I did this, right? Let's say that, um, well, here I may do this just very explicitly. A is on the GPU, B is on the CPU. Um, let, let me do like a restart and run all and kind of show you what happens here. Uh, where is my, uh, everything's a little bit different. Um, uh, a little bit different in laboratory than what we're used to, uh, but it's not too strange. Uh, okay, so let me run this, and I'm gonna get an error this time, right? Because A and B are not in the same place, so I can't I can't do that operation. You know, expected object of device type CUDA, but dot one of CPU. They're talking about the B matrix. Their B matrix should be in the same place as A, right? So you generally want to do these things. Maybe you move it to the GPU, maybe later you move it back. Just make sure you're kind of matching them up for the operations that you're doing.